This question appeared in NEET PG 2022 and it is on opioid overdose. The question says a patient with opioid poisoning presented with severe respiratory depression. What is the most effective drug for the patient? Your options are Formipizole, Naltrexon, Naloxone and Fumazenine. Now, opioid uh, overdose, opioid toxicity is a very, very high topic for NEET PG as well as INICT. Questions have been asked on, you know, overdose symptoms, management. So let's quickly look at opioid overdose and what are the effects of opioid overdose. So let's start with looking at the central effects. So there are some effects on the central nervous system. Let's start by looking at that. So the first most important effect is analgesia. So we know that it decreases both sensory as well as effective component of pain. So the line is itself uh, clear that both the sensation as well as the perception of pain is altered by opioids. The second most important effect is euphoria, sedation. Now sedation can be described as drowsiness or mental clouding. Okay, There are some opioids which will have less of this sedation. So name has been asked. So remember pentanil and meperidine. Both have lesser sedation or mental clouding. Next important effect is respiratory depression. We know that there is a dose dependent, there is a dose dependent respiratory depression, and it happens primarily at the depression at the brain stem level. Okay. And one very important characteristic is this there is a depressed response to CO2 challenge in cases of resp uh, respiratory depression due to opioid. The next important effect is cough suppression. So we all know that it suppresses the cough reflex. Okay, And what will happen when the cough reflex is suppressed? So there will be accumulation of the secretions. That accumulation may cause you know, the uh, obstruction of the bronchi and the bronchioles and eventually leading to at atelectasis. So that is due to the cuff suppression. Also, it has been used in drugs like codeine. This particular uh, you know, feature has been used as a cuff suppressant feature of codeine and primarily used to treat either pathological cuff, any kind of pathological cuff or you know, in patients who are in ET ventilation to suppress the cuff reflex. Again, codeine is used. The next important CNS feature will be Meiosis. So all these patients will have pinpoint people, pinpoint pupils, classically mentioned in all your clinical cases. The next including uh, will be truncal rigidity. So rigidity of the truncal muscles will cause truncal rigidity. This happens at supraspinal level. Okay. So inhibition at supraspinal level will cause to truncal rigidity. There is a very important syndrome which has been asked in the examination, and that is wooden chest syndrome also called as stiff chest syndrome. So what happens in this case, there is severe muscle rigidity, which leads to, you know, rep respiration, uh, decreased respiration and eventual respiratory hypoxia. Certain neuroendocrine effects. So there is one hormone, so luteinizing hormone, the production is decreased, whereas there is a increased production of ADH, somatostatin, as well as prolactin. So these are the central effects of opioid overdose. Let's look at the peripheral effects of opioid. So let's first discuss the most important CVS. Now remember there is no direct effect of opioids in a CVS patient and that is the reason why we use morphine as an agent of choice for analgesia in myocardial infarction. However, two agents which you have to remember is pethidine and pentazosine. Both of these will have anticholinergic activity. Because of that, they will cause tachycardia and hence they are contraindicated in MI patients. Okay. Otherwise, opioids in general will not have any effect on CVS system. Let's look at the GIT where they will cause constipation. Okay. Biliary tract. Again, it will cause here biliary colic also because of the contraction of the spincher of odi there will be reflux of the pancreatic and the biliary 
there will be a reflux of pancreatic and biliary secretions and this will lead to increase in the amylase and lipase level in some of these patients. Next, let's look at what will be effect on the renal. So, it will decrease the blood flow. Now, decreased blood flow in renal tissue will mean decreased GFR, decreased renal function and antidiuresis. Also, it can cause the constriction of spincher and leading to urinary retention. Urinary tension. So, having looked at all the different effects of opioid, let's look at what will an opioid overdose patient present with. So, there is a triad. There will be respiratory depression. There will be decreased consciousness, okay, or mental clouding, and pin point pupil, okay. And to manage it, we will give naloxone. Why naloxone? It is a general antagonist of opioid receptor. Okay. And hence, it will reverse all the effects of opioid. And very importantly, what you have to know is the adverse effect of use of naloxone. So, there is something called as overshoot phenomenon, which means overcorrection of the effect of opioid by use of naloxone. So, what are the overshoot phenomenon? So, remember, depending upon what kind of patient it is, if it is a dependent patient, a patient who is dependent on opioid use or if he is a normal person. So, if he is a dependent person on an, a regularly person who is regularly using opioids, then in those cases, it may lead to precipitation of seizures. Whereas, in normal patient, the overshoot phenomenon can lead to ventricular tachycardia, various different types of arrhythmia, hypertension and even pulmonary edema. So, depending upon what kind of patient it is, we will have different overshoot phenomenon symptoms. So, this is about naloxone. So, this brings us to the question answer. So, here we know that the correct answer is C, naloxone. Let's quickly learn few things about all the other options also because they are also very important drugs and they may be asked in future examination. So, the first drug is formipizole. So, we know that its mechanism of action is it inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase. Okay. So, what does, there are some toxic alcohols. Can you name some toxic alcohols? Methanol, ethanol, glycol. So, it's converted into toxic metabolites. Is done by this alcohol dehydrogenase. So, once this is inhibited, right, so that toxic alcohols like methanol and ethanol uh, and ethanol glycol cannot be converted into toxic metabolites. So, it is primarily used in methanol and ethylene glycol poisoning. Okay. Let's talk about naltrexone. So, we know that it is a specific inhibitor of mu opioid receptors. Now, it is primarily used in two cases. Once, if you are treating for opioid dependence or patients with alcohol dependence, you know, to reduce the alcohol cravings and all. So, that is naltrexone. Flumazenine, so we know it is a benzodiazepine inhibitor, okay. It acts on the GABA A receptors and it is primarily used to, you know, reverse the effect of sedation of overdose of benzodiazepine. So, if there is a case of overdose of benzodiazepine to reverse the sedation, we will use this flumazenil. Also, you know, in some process also, procedures also, if we see, give benzodiazepine to reverse the effect, we will give flumazenil. So, these are the options. All the options are very important from exam point of view. This is a very, very high yield topic from exam point of view. And you should know all the effects of opioid, its over, overdose symptoms and how to manage it. And all these drugs are also very important from exam point of view. Thank <laughs> you.